Greetings and welcome friends, Mr. Wadi here. Today we're going to take a look at two separate foldable notes and we're going to specifically be talking about owns. Uh, we'll deal with their volume and then their surface area uh, is what we're going to do. Um, so the first foldable looks like this one, uh, so make sure you got the right one out. And then the last foldable is going to look like this one and we're going to specifically do just this portion from that and calculate the surface area of this cone. Uh, so let's uh, jump right into this. Uh, I guess it's not a bad idea to hit the foundational concept here of making sure we know how to find the area of a circle because it's going to be related to both of these formulas. If I want to calculate the area of a circle, the dimension I need to know is the radius and the area of a circle formula is pi times the radius squared. Uh, and be aware that according to PEMDAS, we are going to deal with the exponent before we do the multiplication, right? PE, E is for exponent, and M for multiplication. So PEMDAS, we do exponentiation first, and then the multiply by pi. Uh, at times, they might specify for you to use 3.14 for pi. Uh, I'm also fine if you use the pi button. Also notice that my pies, sometimes I add little swoops for their, their hats. I don't know why. I just like it. Uh, I understand that's not technically what the symbol is. So to find the area here, I'm going to do area is equal to pi times, and we'll throw this 5, the radius, uh, in and square it. Uh, if I want to square a number, you could, it just means to multiply a number by itself, 5 times 5. Uh, I also do have a squared button on my calculator, um, which literally looks like this, x squared. So I would hit the number 5 and then square it like so. And so in this case, I would get pi times uh, 5 squared is 25. And so this is an exact value. Uh, also, for area, it, it's going to take your one-dimensional measurements and square them. So my area is going to be in inches squared, which is the number of right little squares that I could subdivide this up into. And that's what's kind of interesting about this is that it actually is going to um, account for even the little curvy edged pieces. It all adds up and it'll give me an approximation for that. And so an approximate value, when I use an estimate for pi, is going to be, let's find out, I'm going to use the pi button, I'm going to defy these directions, and I'm going to get 78.54. Uh, and also I defied this direction as well. I like rounding to two places. And uh, since this was in inches, this is now in inches squared. And so that is going to be the area of a circle. Right, so you've probably seen that before, uh, and yeah, that's the number of squares that would fit into that space. Now, uh, taking that concept and multiplying it by another dimension, right, I'm going to do the same thing here. Oh, that's actually convenient. They used the same dimension. Uh, if I want to find the volume of a cylinder, it's actually very similar to the volume of a prism. I just find the area of the base and multiply by the height. So the height is moving away from the plane that the base is on, right, perpendicular to it. And so if I take uh, the area of this base and multiply it by the height, it ends up giving me, uh, right, a whole bunch of those areas multiplied by that dimension, and it will end up filling this space and giving me the volume of it. Uh, so in this case, the area of the base, I actually already calculated. Uh, since the base is a circle, I would do pi r squared. It would be that, 78.54. We'll use that, why not? Uh, so 78.54. And so my volume is going to equal 78.54 multiplied by 12. And notice it's a good thing that these units match up. And so uh, actually in this case, I probably still have the 78.54 in my calculator's memory, I do, and uh, in fact, decimals even after that. So I'm just going to hit multiply, and now my calculator screen says ants multiply by, uh, and hit 12, 
equals, and I get 942.48 when I round. I know I'm breaking all their rules. Uh, and this would be in cubic inches. So this is the number of little one by one by one cubes that would fill this uh, cylinder, this little can or jar or whatever. Uh, so I could fit 942 little cubes that are one by one by one in this solid. All right, so for a cylinder, uh, you could use the little piecemeal formula where you just take whatever shape your base is. In this case, it being a circle, I used uh, b was equal to pi r squared. Uh, or you can uh, already take the formula version and plug that in and also get uh, pi r squared multiplied by h uh, will also equal the volume. All right, so some people want to have a formula where they plug in everything and it does it for them. But, uh, but you can, you know, piecemeal solve it, plug that value in, and then go from there as well. <coughs> and so, so either of these will work as the volume of a cylinder formula, right? We've seen that before. Um, now what's interesting is we're going to go to the world of cones. Ah, so once again, I'm trying to find volume here. And a cone is going to be similar to like a cylinder, but it's going to be less than a cylinder, right? Because you could have imagined that a uh, cylinder would have had a whole lot more volume to it uh, that would have been included, right? The height here happens to be 12. That you could have imagined that this cylinder would have had a whole lot more volume, and I've shaved a bunch away, and I'm left with just this conical structure here, right? So I've, I'm left with the cone after I shave off all of the excess. And it turns out that the volume of a cone is going to be very similar to the volume of a pyramid formula. It is actually one-third of the area of the base multiplied by the height. And so that also tells me that the volume of this cone is one-third of the equivalent cylinder, right, that had the same base dimension and height. Uh, so I'm expecting that this cone will be exactly one-third of my last answer. Uh, but let's write it out as though I was, I was uh, doing this. So maybe I would have looked at this base first, and maybe I would have done the pi r squared sort of thing. Um, right, pi r squared. Calculated that, I would have gotten the 78 point what, 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 what? Five, four. Five, four. I would have had my one third out front and, and multiply by my h, uh, which the height, actually, you might be like, hey, wait, there's kind of like two, two values here. Which one's going to be my height? Well, the height is always going to be perpendicular to your base plane. So the height here is going to be the 12. Um, now, if I was calculating this, I realized I've already done this product. Uh, if I was calculating this, I would try to cancel out the one-third with something that I know is divisible by 3. And in this case, I happen to know that 12 is. So I would cancel out the 3, and 3 goes into 12 four times. And so to calculate this, my volume is approximately going to be 78.54 multiplied by 4. I will do that on a calculator. And I get 314.16. This is a volume, so this is in cubic units. Oh, that's like a weird slopey N there. Inches cubed, uh, like so. All right. Uh, and so that ends up being the volume, the number of cubic units that would go inside of that. So that's, remember, those are a little one by one by one cubes. And obviously, uh, they wouldn't be full cubes, right? A bunch of them would come in contact with the edge of the circle, just like uh, these ones did. Uh, a bunch of them would have come in contact with the curvy edges of that. But the, the general idea is it's just a third of the cylinder. And that's exactly the space, the volume that this cone takes up. And so that's volume. Uh, now if I wanted to go to surface area, 
that is a different question. Uh, volume would be like how much water or ice cream or paint could fit inside of this cone. Uh, or right, if I make a pile of salt or sand and it ends up making somewhat of a conical shape pile, right? How much sand is there? How much space does it take up? That's a volume question, right? Filling, right? Volume is, uh, right, how much it fills. But if I now go to my other foldable, I'm talking about surface area here, all right? And surface area is no longer asking a question about volume. The fact that it's in an area, it's going to be units squared. And the question this would be asking is, right, how many square units would cover the surface of this? Um, so you could imagine, instead of asking how much fills up this space, this would be how much covers this surface. So surface area would be like if I was trying to figure out how much wrapping paper I need, how much paint not to fill an object, but to paint the surface of the object would I need. And so surface area for cones is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, you can bet that it's, if I kind of try to imagine the net of a cone, uh, that I can, right, fill out the, the bottom. The bottom's definitely going to be covered. Let's see, while well, I'm distracted with my brain here, I'm trying to look up something. How are you guys doing today? You doing okay? Doing good? Yeah. Uh, here, let me show you some additional little graphics, gir giraffics here. Um, so the lateral area of a cone, right, maybe you've ever made like a little cone hat sort of thing. You can imagine that the lateral area is, is going to be some weird little pie sliced out piece, kind of like that. Uh, and so if I want to represent that area, it's, it is going to be conical, uh, or a weird circle shape, um, uh, like this, in which this lateral area, this is the part that would fold up to be the coney part, uh, would be like that, and I'm going to need the area of the base. And so I need to find a way to figure out the area of the base, which I will have. That's the pi r squared. All right, that's a better arrow there. And this area is actually going to be um, pi times the radius times the slant height. So the slant height is going to be significant to us. Um, I think I have, see if I can pull up a little animation from some GeoGebra website. That is, I think, a pretty good explanation of, of what's going on here. Uh, let's see, whose work is this? Ah, uh, Sebastian Bielheskaizes. Sorry. Sorry, Sebastian, but thank you for your excellent work. Um, and so notice this. Uh, right, you can imagine a cone in the surface area, right, it's going to have the base, which is a circle, and now if I unzip the lateral part and unroll it, it ends up being a piece kind of like that. And depending on the height of the object, uh, that piece is actually going to look a little different. Sometimes it's more uh, Pac-Man-y in shape, um, and sometimes it is not. Uh, can I drag that? No, it doesn't let me drag it, does it? Um, right, and depending on the radius, you can see that that also changes. Now, um, the radius of the base, notice, is also changing the length of this arc. And the reason is that this blue portion, right, if you notice, needs to be able to wrap exactly one time around that circle. Uh, so that blue arc must wrap exactly one time around the circle. So if I change the radius, this blue arc has to meet that radius and wrap around it one time. And so if I want the surface area, I just need to find these two areas and add them together. And uh, we're gonna end up using that value, which is a slant height, okay? Which is the hypotenuse, conveniently, of this little right triangle. So uh, with that kind of explanation of the origin of this, let me give you the formula. So the surface area, let's see, I'm running out of colors here. Uh, I'll just use yellow. So surface area of a cone is going to be the pi r squared, which represents that, that base. That makes sense. And I'm going to add to it pi 
times the radius times the slant height. And the slant height is going to be this dimension. Now what you're going to have to be careful of, that's like a cursive -E L sort of thing, a scripted L. What you're going to have to be careful of is sometimes they might ask you for surface area, uh, but give you the regular height. And if I wanted to find that slant height, and all I knew was the regular height and the radius, uh, what I could do is Pythagorean theorem, because this is going to be a right triangle. And so I could do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals what squared? And if I solve that, I would end up having that value. So let's, uh, let's figure this out. I, I don't know if you'll be able to fit all this in your little paper. I apologize. But I do have my other video with more examples. This will be a great little, uh, great little example sample for you. Uh, so my surface area, in this case, is going to be pi r squared. Oh, we've, been, we've done that one before. Uh, so pi times 5 squared. And I'm going to add to it pi r l. So pi times this radius, once again, is 5. And multiplied by the slant height is that 13 there. And so this one is 5 squared is 25 pi, right? Plus uh, 5 times 13, 50, plus 5 times 3 is 15, so 65 pi's. I could combine those. And my surface area is going to equal 65 plus 25 is, uh, let's see, 70, 90 pies. And the units here are not cubic. They are squared. It's a two-dimensional value that I'm coming up with. So this would be, in this case, inches squared. And then I could uh, obviously find an approximation for that. I'm going to do some 90 pi in the calculador. And I got 282.74 square inches. And that is the amount that it would take to cover or wrap or paint this cone structure. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, Internet friends. Uh, have a great day. Calc you later.